In this coding exercise, we are going to work with arrays, and we're going to see how we can combine arrays, and we're also going to see how we can work with that combined array to perform some changes on it. So this is something that is a pretty common task when it comes to working with APIs. For example, say that you get a set of APIs in, and you may have multiple arrays that you have to parse through. One, you're going to have multiple collections. So with that in mind, you're going to have to combine those collections if you want to do something such as run a database query or put the items into a file or just store them in the database. But you can't really do anything when you have multiple arrays. Here in the RSpec tests, I set up three test arrays. Arrays, arrays one, two, and three. And these are full of integers, but if you notice, the integers are actually inside of strings. So what our goal is in this coding exercise is to one, combine all the arrays so that they're a single array, and then from there to convert each one of these items inside of it to an integer. So this is something that is very common, like I mentioned, when working with APIs, because there are times when you're going to have to take in multiple collections from an API, and then you're going to have to convert them because API data, if it comes in via JSON, is going to be a string, even if it is for integer values. So this is something that's relatively common. Up here we have an array converter, and this array converter is going to take a set of arrays. We know it's going to take a set because I'm using the splat operator right here. That's what the asterisk is for, which means that this can take any number of arrays. And also notice that I'm calling this splat arrays, but I could call this splat anything. I'm going to call it arrays because I think it makes sense to have your variables named properly because if you look at this, it pretty much instantly tells you what this item and what this method takes in. Now, in the expectation, what we're expecting to do is we have three arrays and it has 10 values if you total all of them up. We have three here, four here, three here. And inside of our array converter, what we're saying is if I pass you all three arrays, I want the count of what's returned to equal 10, which means that it took all of them and it combined them. Now, the second expectation, what it's doing, is it's saying that I want to, with the array converter, if I only pass you a single value, so in other words, if I only pass you array 1, 1, this proves that we're able to pass in any number of arrays we want. Here we're passing in three, here we're passing in one, so it's nice and flexible. And then also what I'm doing is I'm looking for the first element. In this case, it's just going to be one. Now you say that this is one already, but what I'm doing is notice how right here this one is a string and this one is an integer. So we're going to be doing two things here. Now the way that we can accomplish this is I can say arrays.flatten and this is going to accomplish the first part of our requirement. And I can test this out because let's say I'm going to copy these and just give us a little test case here. And right here, what I'm going to do is say array converter, and let's pass in array one and array two. Okay, now if I run this code, we should get a single array, and we do. So right here, notice how what this returns is one, five, 9, 10, 2, 7, and 10. So that returned exactly what we wanted. We have now one array, but they are still strings, so our work is not done yet. So the next thing that we can do is we can pass in right here a, a another method. So instead of just flatten, we can pass map in. And what map will do is it'll allow us to map over the entire set of items. So I'm going to do map and I'm going to pass in a block so I can use this nice uh, syntax, uh, syntactic sugar here where I do the ampersand followed by a symbol 
followed by the name of the method I want. And what this is, is the to integer method. So now if I save this and I run it, look at that. Now we have our array converter set up just like this. And this is now converting the array. It's flattening it, so it's converting it into a single array, and then it's converting it all into integers. Now, if this syntax here with this ampersand is a little bit fuzzy, just note that this is actually just a shortcut for making the full map procedure. So if I get rid of this, this is the exact same thing as if I did map, passed it a block variable, and then had the block variable converted with the regular to integer method. That's what 2i stands for is to integer. Now if I come and run this code again, you'll see that this is identical. And just so you can see that Ruby is incredibly flexible with implementations, I can also change this so that not only is it possible to do this on one line, but this is the exact same thing as if I did it just like this. So here, we have three options when it comes to using blocks in Ruby. So I have the ability to do a do and end block. This is rarely done if you only have a single operation you're going to perform right here. But if you have, say, four or five items and four or five processes, then this would be a perfect spot for it. Then we have the other way, which was with the curly brackets on one line. And then we have the really nice short way, which is the first way I did it, where I use the ampersand. And whenever you do that in Ruby, you're saying that I know that you are going to be iterating over all these items, and I want you to pass this method, which in this case was to integer, to each item that you run across. Now, if I run this code again, you'll see it all works exactly the same way. Now, I am going to get rid of all of this because I really like the first way that I did this. So I'm going to get rid of this, get rid of all this, and I'm going to go back to the ampersand symbol to integer. And now if I run this just to verify I don't have any syntax errors, everything is working. And if I come over here and run the RSpec tests, all of these tests now should be working. So if I do Today is December 28th. There you go. One example, zero failures. So that is how you can convert multiple arrays, take in any number of arrays that you want, convert them into a single array, and then also convert them to a different data type.